In this week's video, we'll take a look at the company that owns three of the largest chains in the US, Yum Brands. The three restaurants I'm talking about are KFC, Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell. And as you'll see, their origins are actually pretty humble. Before we get started on the story, if you're like us a Business Explored, not only will you enjoy learning about great businesses, you'll enjoy investing in them too. Check out the link in the description to get a free trial to our favorite stock research tool. Enjoy! Now back to the video. Let's start the story with KFC and its famous creator Colonel Sanders, real name Harlan Sanders, who opened his very first restaurant in 1930, serving his customers country ham, pork steaks, and most importantly, delicious fried chicken. Sanders' chicken was so good that he became a local celebrity and an honorary Kentucky colonel in 1935. Sanders worked hard to improve his recipe and he finally perfected it in 1940 as a mixture of 11 herbs and spices. In 1952, Sanders decided to franchise his chicken recipe to Pete Harmon, the owner of a restaurant near Salt Lake City. Harmon ended up being a huge contributor to the early franchise. He was the one who came up with the name Kentucky Fried Chicken and he later trademarked the famous finger licking good slogan. In 1956, Sanders had managed to get six other franchisees and despite some huge setbacks, managed to get around 200 franchised restaurants by 1960. And by 1963, that number had tripled to more than 600, becoming the largest fast food operation at the time. Managing KFC became so overwhelming that Colonel Sanders, now 74 years old, sold his company for $2 million in 1964. We will find out who he sold it to in a little bit, but first, let's see our next big brand, Pizza Hut. Now, pizza, despite being one of the most iconic dishes in the US, is actually a very recent phenomenon. It only started becoming popular after the end of World War II, when American soldiers returned from Italy. By the end of the 1950s, pizza parlors were still very much a rare sight, found most often near communities of Italian immigrants. In 1958, inspired by the story of one such place, Dan and Frank Carney decided to open their own pizza restaurant on their university's campus in Wichita. The tiny building looked a lot like a hut, and so they decided to call their establishment the Pizza Hut. Business was good, and one year later, the Carney brothers got their first franchise contract in the nearby city of Topeka. Over the next decade, as pizza grew in popularity across the US, Pizza Hut expanded rapidly. By 1966, the franchise had increased to over 145 restaurants, and the Carney brothers were already looking to go international, first to Canada, and then Germany, Australia, Japan, and Great Britain. By 1971, they had a thousand restaurants and were the largest pizza chain in the world. The Carney brothers finally cashed in on their amazing success in 1972, when the company went public with a listing on the New York Stock Exchange. We will get back to Pizza Hut in a little bit, but now let's look at our last brand, Taco Bell. The creator of Taco Bell was a man named Glenn Bell who opened a hot dog stand in San Bernardino in 1946. Across the street from his hot dog stand was a popular Mexican restaurant where Glenn would eat regularly. He became close friends with the owner who taught Glenn the art of making delicious tacos. Eventually, Glenn felt confident enough that he sold his hot dog stand and started making tacos himself. Over the next 10 years, he would experiment with his idea of Mexican fast food restaurant several times. Each chain he started was a success, but they were all shared ventures where Glenn was only a minority shareholder. He was a pretty independent guy, and so in the end, he sold his stake and in 1962, he got the money to open his first Taco Bell in Downey, California. You probably know where this is going. I mean, the 1960s were the decade when franchising really exploded as a concept, and the early adopters of this business model were very successful. The first Taco Bell franchise contract was signed in 1964 for a restaurant in the South Bay area of Los Angeles. Six years later, when the company went public in 1970, it had a total of 325 franchised restaurants. It is at this point in our story that Pepsi comes in. Not the drink, but the company. 
This will probably come as a surprise to most Coca-Cola lovers, but the Pepsi Corporation was actually a huge food and beverage conglomerate that owned a bucket load of brands and made the decision to get their hands on as many popular franchises as they could. This is where our three stories meet. Pizza Hut and Taco Bell were public companies when Pepsi acquired them in the late 1970s. KFC, on the other hand, was private, and it had changed hands three times before finally being bought by Pepsi in 1986 for $850 million. With the three franchises under their control, Pepsi was briefly the largest restaurant company in the world. I say briefly because just one decade later in 1997, Pepsi made the very questionable decision of spinning off its restaurant business into a separate company. Now, the reasons they give at the time were that the restaurant business was becoming unpredictable, which was kind of true. Domestic sales have been decreasing for the past three years. But almost immediately after becoming independent from Pepsi, the new company, called Tricon Global Restaurants, saw huge success. They gave their franchises a facelift and released various new products and menus. In 2002, they changed their name to Yum Brands to better reflect their multi-brand strategy. Since then, they've become a huge success, becoming the largest restaurant company in the world. I hope you enjoyed this story of Yum Brands. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, and check out our other videos on more interesting companies.